Hello people, Suffolk Sport Glide Rider here. Please remember in all my videos I'm not a professional filmmaker or videographer, I'm purely an amateur. And please remember I'm not a professional mechanic either. Just an amateur trying to show that some jobs can be done at home, saving a bit of time and money and the satisfaction that you can do the jobs yourself. Thanks for watching. Hello people, Suffolk Sport Glide Rider here. I think I should have had a video out last Friday but as we know it's riding season and we've all been very busy I'm sure. I've been out a lot lately, uh, we just had the East of England Hog Rally the last weekend in July and we had the hottest day on record on the Thursday. By the Saturday it's raining or drizzling on us for uh, the ride out to Sheringham, our annual ride. And by the Sunday normal service resumed and it poured with rain so I got soaked on the ride home. Anyway, let's get on with this video. Quick update on the handlebars. As you know, on my last video I had set the handlebars and uh, was reasonably happy with it. I've done about 300 miles on them and I'm not sure if the handlebar was a bit too low. So in case I do decide to go back to it, what we've done, or what I've done, Bit of good old electrical tape again and carefully mark carefully mark with a pen where the handle bars bars were and as you can see here it's only about a quarter of an inch I've pulled the bars up but obviously because of the angles of the bar at the other end these have actually raised the had handles have actually raised up by a good inch so I'll ride this for a few hundred miles decide if it's right if I need to alter it again or if I do want to go back to how I had them for the rally, I've already got it marked on there with a bit of tape so I can quite easily come back to the uh, original setting. Personal preference, how you set your handlebars, you know, it's got to be comfortable for you uh, with all the riding you're going to be doing. Okay. Today we're going to be talking about removing the battery. So first thing you need to do is take the side panel off. I'm going to take the side panel off both sides. Uh, for this we need a 530 tooths Allen head. Or a 530 seconds if you speak proper English. I'm going to take it off the other side as well because uh, I want to explain something to you. Now I was going to do a full video to show how to remove the battery from the 2018 soft tail range. Having, se having seen a video online with a guy saying that you had to remove the rear wheel to get the battery. Where he got that idea from I don't know. However I've actually found a couple of videos online including one from Matt Laidlaw where they got one of their workers who's not a mechanic to remove the battery from his bike with no mechanical training, just the workshop manual, uh, same as I just what I use. Um, so the battery can be moved in, removed in 20 minutes, give or take 5 minutes. The difference I need to point out for us compared to videos in the US is that we have an alarm siren on our bikes. So if your bike makes this noise when you turn it on and this noise when you turn it off That means you've got the alarm with a siren fitted. So if you don't disable that siren, when you disconnect the negative battery terminal, which is down here, or pull the main fuse, as I will show you, the alarm will go off. So you've got to disconnect that first. So remove the left hand side panel, and as you can see, there is the negative battery terminal in here which you can get to, ideally you should take the seat off and if you're going to remove the battery in total you do need to take the seat off so you can get to the positive terminal on the other side. On the other side of the bike you can see I'll take the side panel off because this is where you need to get to the main fuse, the main fuse is in here. All I've done so far, I'll take the side panel off and I've removed my 
FP3 out of the way because I have that strapped on here. So to get the main fuse out, for any work that's done on the bike, they always say take the main fuse out, but as you know, I don't. But from where it is sitting there, the easiest way is to pull this bit off the top, which is held on with Velcro, just to move that out of the way slightly. And the whole fuse container, then with a bit of wiggling, slides backwards, little bit of wiggling he says and it comes out you can then take the cover off of this and get to the main fuse underneath the cover then slides off of that just squeezing out the uh, the two side connections and you have your fuses and as you can see your main fuse the big 40 amp now if I pull that fuse without disconnecting the alarm system, the siren is going to go off, as I will now show you. And the only way to reset that is to have your key fob in your pocket, turn the ignition on and turn it off again. So this is the problem we've got in the UK. To pull the main fuse to do any work, you've got to disable the alarm system. And the same will happen on the other side of the bike if I disconnect the negative battery terminal. The bike thinks it's been stolen, it's been stripped, therefore it goes off. So quite simply, to disable the alarm system, quite simple. Have your key fob near the bike, in your pocket, whatever. Turn the ignition on, as you can see it's come on, then you can pull the main fuse and the alarm doesn't go off. Jump back up, turn the ignition off again and you can now proceed with whatever work it is you want to do on the bike. Um, quite safe that the alarm is not suddenly going to go off and scare the uh, the crap out of you. So I know the US don't have this siren alarm type fitted. Uh, we do in the UK, I'm sure we do in most of Europe and there will be other places in the world that do. And some people do fit the, uh, the siren as an aftermarket uh, attachment. So if you, it chirps when you turn the bike on and off like I showed you. You need to disable that before disconnecting the battery or the main fuse. Simple as that, people. Okay, having said I wasn't going to take the seat off to show you everything I just have. So as I showed, with the left-hand side panel removed, you can get to the negative battery terminal in there. And to remove the battery, all this plastic stuff has to be taken off. It's a lot of faffing about, but... It's not that difficult. The garage door just decided to close on me. Then when it comes to removing the positive terminal, the positive terminal is down inside there. So it's a little bit fiddly to get to. And ideally, after you pop that plastic cover off the, uh, the positive terminal, you're best to use a magnetic bit so you don't drop that screw. You drop that screw down there and it's going to take you a lifetime to get it out. So yeah, use a magnetic uh, screwdriver to pull that bit out. So in all the videos, yeah, the battery will slide out through that side. Not that difficult to get it out. Personally, I reckon it's going to be a damn sight harder to get it back in because there's lots of little clips in here um, that need to be clipped back into pl just like this plastic bit here. As you can see, some come out dead easy, but it's getting the buggers all back in there. And again, your fill hole for your uh, transmission is down there as well. Not the best place to put it, so but these things are sent to try us. Not detracting from the fact it's a great bike. Great bike, great frame, great chassis with that monoshock suspension. Well, time to put it back together. So, 
for people with the alarm you've got to disable that siren before pulling the main fuse or disconnecting the battery otherwise it's a most annoying noise that's going to be going off in your ears for hours anyway hope it's been of some use to you people out there well that's it for this video folks thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and thanks to all those that have subscribed catch you soon stay safe